Hi everybody, I'm Brian Barr, the inventory manager here at Streetside Classics in Charlotte. And today, we're gonna to talk about Mustangs, one of everybody's favorite subject. And the topic of, is this the greatest car of all time? And if so, which Mustang is it? Make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to receive notifications on all the Mustangs that arrive into inventory. With six showrooms, you can see and drive any Mustang from the very first 64 and a half up to the modern uh, Shelby's and GT 500s. We're going to take a look at a variety of Mustangs today, including some classic Shelby's, a tribute and a clone, notchbacks, fastbacks, Mach 1s, Boss 302s, even Mustang 2s. We have a lot of different Mustangs from the very beginning to the brand new stuff here at Streetside Classic across all our showrooms, all six of them here in the States. The greatest of Mustang of all time. A lot of people will tell you that's the 1965-66 Shelby GT350, which it appears I'm standing next to today. But this one happens to be a tribute of the Hertz cars, the GT350H, the Red Eraser program that you've probably all heard about. And next to us here, we have a real GT500 Mustang. So why do people build tributes versus an original car? There's a lot of different reasons. Some folks, the originality of the car, it might be a show car, it might be a collector piece of family heirloom, something that they just don't wanna put the miles on, and that's just a segment of the hobby they love. There's other people that drive their original cars. Other people like to put their own twist on things, like this tribute car. While it appears a pretty exacting replica of a GT350H, which you could rent from Hertz back in the day, this one has a 347 stroker, and a five-speed manual gearbox behind it. The great color combination, Hertz made these in black and gold, which we're all familiar with, but they also made red and gold and white and gold, color options you rarely see. Again, when you're building a tribute like this, you can make some modifications that don't really hurt uh, the originality. This car started as a plain Jane Fastback, but they went on to put in all those iconic Shelby details, the stripes, the hood, the dash-mounted tack, they even went as far as to put in the brake vents here in the back and the Lexan or Perspec windows. All things that the GT350s had back in the early 60s that make these iconic. This guy improved the, dress, the drivability of the car, putting the stroker motor in, a more modern transmission, so he could really use it and have a bunch of fun with it. It actually, as you can see, is part of our feature car program here at Streetside. The GT500 is a rare color in lime gold, a unique color in the green gold that it is. This is a 67, and the difference in value on these cars is this is a numbers matching, very exacting car, just as it was delivered back in the day. Uh, it has all the right options in it. It has the really funky, cool high back uh, uh, seat belts in it, the wood rim steering wheel, it's a manual car. It's a beautiful example of a very original GT500 from 1967. Some people will argue that these are some of the best uh, Shelbys out there versus you'll find some of the other purists love to join into the debate of the early cars are fabulous. And so are the later cars. We're gonna look at some modern Shelbys later and those are just equally as wonderful as well. There are a lot of different engine options that you could get in Mustangs, six cylinders, V8s, high performance V8s, uh, especially in these early cars, it changes the personality of uh, them dramatically. You either get automatics or four speeds. This particular car is equipped with a stroker motor uh, as it's a tribute. It was upgraded with a 347 stroker and a five speed manual transmission. Let's take a look under the hood of this GT350 H tribute. This small block car is a Stroker 347, which means they've changed the crank in it. It has an Edelbrock aluminum intake, four barrel carburetor. It's dressed up with the Cobra um, intake and powered by Ford um, that you would see sort of on the original cars. It has a front drive system, vintage air conditioning, but there are still some fun things that would have been just like it was in 66, like the plastic Ford windshield wiper uh, bag in it. It has the strut tower brace, uh, which was something that the factory cars uh, came with as well. Uh, it's a really nice clone with just more power. 
and more power is fun. The Shelby GT uh, cars came as the GT350 and the GT500. This example is a GT500. This has a big block in it, a 428 Cobra Jet V8. This was the car to have back in 1967. Now under the hood of the GT500. The legendary 428 Cobra Jet. And this is just as it would have come off the showroom floor in 1967. Somebody went in, ordered all the right boxes on this car. The big block power, manual transmission, a great color in lime gold. And when you look at the details of this car, it has the Autolite battery, the stay full battery, just as it would have been in 67. It has all the proper correct stampings and chalk marks and paint marks, as you can see underneath the engine uh, compartment, as they would have done as it was rolling down the assembly line uh, back in the day. It also, as we saw in the other car, this one has the actual aluminum air cleaner and finned aluminum valve covers. On the big block car, they said Cobra Le Mans, if you'll recall, in the Ford versus Ferrari. Ford made a dedicated campaign against winning the ultimate road race. While these cars didn't compete, and the Cobras did in the GT40s, this paid homage to that. The big block 428 Cobra Jet. One of my favorite motors. If we're going to talk about the greatest Mustang of all time, we need to talk about 1969 and 1970. The Boss 302 and the Mach 1. And the debate continues. Which do you prefer? A Boss 302? A Mach 1? Again, engine transmissions, all the different options. Here at Streetside, we are your one-stop shop for Mustangs. Our inventory staff, our sales guys, very knowledgeable on all the different years. This, for example, it looks like a Boss 302, but is it? No, it's a Mach 1. The owner, when he restored it, and he had this car for years, just decided, ah, I'm gonna put the Boss 302 stripes on it, because I like them. He still has all the original Mach 1 uh, bits that would go on the car. So, a lot of different uh, parts of the hobby, a lot of different ways to interpret the hobby in Mustangs, and do what you like. Restore your car how you like it. Little changes that make you happy, other people find that interesting too. So, it looks like a Boss 302, but it's really a Mach 1. Again, you could get, in this era of Mustangs, small block cars, big block cars, 302s, 351s, 428s. We have examples of a 351. The Cobra Jet again, as we saw in the Shelby. We have an automatic big block car, an, a manual four-speed car, and a manual 351 car. All great options, different driving experiences for what you like. When we entered this uh, generation of Mustangs, along with the options, came more creature comforts. You could get fold-down rear seats, which you could get in the early cars. These cars had a little more luxury, a little more uh, comfort and performance versus the bare-bones 64, 5, 6, especially when you got into the Shelbys and the Shelby clones. It were very performance street-oriented. You could have big block performance in an automatic, and be able to commute to work in it. And that's what people did in these cars back in the day. Continuing the discussion on 69 versus 70, you can see there's a decided difference in the front ends of the 269s versus the 70. The 69s are the hotter sellers here uh, at Streetside. And a quick sidebar, when I was a young kid, my babysitter, her parents bought her one of these brand new in 1969 same color combination and everything. When this rolled in, the memories flooded in with it. That's part of the hobby, and that's part of the fun of coming to visit us here at Streetside. Also, in this era of Mustangs, there are a lot of different stripe packages. And you see we have two examples uh, of them here. You could black out your hood. You could have the stripe. An iconic feature of this era car is the rear spoiler and the rear louvered windows. It's very distinctive to the 69 and 70 Mustangs. From the factory, 69 was the first year that you could get the rear wing on the Mustang. This particular 1970 Mach 1 has hubcaps on it, so it was ordered with a big block, an automatic, and steel wheels with the hubcaps on it. Versus what we commonly see and a lot of people put on uh, their Mustang is the Magnum wheel, which is featured on the two 1969 cars. A lot of wheel and tire options out there uh, for Mustangs. In 69 and 70, those were a couple of your options. If we're gonna talk about Mustangs, we need to talk about modern Mustangs as well. 
Here we have a 2014 GT500 and a 2015 GT500. And while they look very similar, these cars are not alike at all. This GT500 is a 345 mile example. A modern day collectible, a modern day classic. Great color combination, black with the red stripes, black interior. This I would consider a future classic. When we take a look at the 2015, beautiful car. This is a Petty Garage Edition. So Richard Petty's Garage modified these Mustangs. And this particular car has 727 horsepower. Completely streetable in a modern car. So we've talked about Mustangs in the past, from our straight sixes to the legendary big block era of the 60s of the 428 Cobra Jets, all the way up to the modern GT500, and people are modifying those for over 700 horsepower. Again, all the luxury options, track-oriented, daily driving performance in one modern package. It's the modern Mustang. If we're gonna talk about Mustangs, we need to talk about body styles. In 64 and a half, we came out, they had the notchback, and in 65, the fastback. We have an example of each here. And it's personal preference. You could also get your Mustang in a convertible, just like today. So throughout the years, Mustang has carried on that heritage of coupe, convertible, or fastback. The fastbacks are very, very, very desirable. The coupes are coming on in popularity. It's an affordable price point into Mustang ownership. And of course, throughout the years in Mustang, there's the infamous Mustang too. Now this one isn't completely stock with the blower sticking through the hood, but we'd be remiss in discussing Mustangs if we didn't touch on the Mustang too. And these also came in a variety of different variants from luxury to the King Cobra II performance. We've only scratched the surface on the Mustangs we have here at Streetside Classics. We have the 71 to 73 long body. There's the uh, late model cars that come in, the 2019 to 2020s. We get those here at Streetside Classics uh, as well. The Fox Body Mustang, what a community that supports that. Chime in in the comments. Let's start a discussion. What would you like to see us feature here on the YouTube channel for Streetside Classics in the Mustang world? Is it the greatest car of all time? I certainly think so.